Hi, everyone. My name is Nicole with OzTrek. I'm here with Matthew. He is the phase one dentistry program coordinator at the University of Queensland, and he's going to talk to us about the dental program. Thanks, Nicole. Good morning, everyone. I'll just share my screen, get the talk up. Uh, you should all be able to see this okay. So yeah, today's talk, basically an introduction to studying dentistry at the University of Queensland in Australia. Um, and really, I'll go through some of the sort of background of what you do in the dental program, and then finish off with some pictures of the building itself uh, and the surrounding area. So it is the largest oral health facility we have in Australia, so and relatively new as well. So UQ itself is quite a, a large university. It's a very research focused university, typically found in the top 50 ranking in the world, uh, depending on which ranking you look at. Has an annual operating budget of about 2 billion Australian dollars. So we've got a little bit of money um, with more than 55,000 undergraduate and postgraduate students and more than 7,000 uh, academic teaching and administrative staff to look after those students. The actual oral health center uh, was opened in 2015. And actually, I saw in the news just the other day, the old Brisbane uh, dental school has just begun to be demolished. So somebody has bought that land in the city and will be building on it. But we've been here for the last six years or so. Um, in 2017, there was a major shift. So we had the integration of the Brisbane Dental Hospital, which was the largest public hospital in the state. Uh, for dentistry and um, that closed down it's a heritage listed building so the building will not be knocked down um, however all those staff came over to the oral health center and in 2017 we had a major shift so we formed an alliance between the university of queensland and the uh, queensland health which is the local health authority and so now all of our students actually see public health patients what that essentially means is that rather than having a selection over our own patients and cases, um, Queensland Health determines which patients you see in the dental program. So typically it does mean that you'll get exposed to a lot more um, complex dentistry. Let's just say that the treatment planning is more complex because the patient needs are so much greater. Uh, the oral health center is the largest and most advanced facility. So there are more than 170 dental chairs. Um, mixed between undergraduate dentistry and postgraduate dentistry. So we do a number of specialist courses. So in undergraduate dentistry in Australia, we do a five-year course. And if you choose to become a specialist in any subdiscipline of dentistry, an endodontist or a prosthodontist or anything like this, then it's a further three years. And so we have some, some chairs set aside for those postgraduate students, uh, as well as actual dental officers from public health who've, who've come over from the Brisbane Dental Hospital. Um, this clinic down the bottom right is, is pretty typical. Uh, we, on average, have about 16 to 20 chairs in about, I think it's, last count, I think it was 11 clinics, so quite a lot of clinics. Um, and each student gets their own cubicle, and so you get a, a privacy between the operator and the patient. And then you have these um, uh, protective glass sliding doors if you want to take radiographs on your patient as well. So it's um, each aisle has about 10 cubicles so that students and staff can talk to each other, come out into the corridor and liaise with each other. But there is uh, privacy. So each dental chair faces the wall. So as you're walking by, you're not really seeing what's happening on in any given patient, but at least you can um, see them and check that they're okay. So dentistry itself is the science and art of, of treating all the conditions, primarily of the dentition, but other uh, soft tissue lesions in the jaws as well. So it really is one of those interesting degrees where it's a combination, not just of the science, you'll do a lot of uh, medical, uh, biomedical sciences, but you're combining that with the artistry of, of sculpting and um, actually reforming often quite complex anatomical shapes to the previous form. So uh, it can be a little bit fun, the practical side, but there is a lot of um, basic science that goes into uh, how you treat the dentition and reform what we call an occlusion. Um, 
we do cover all facets of dentistry at undergraduate level. Um, so general dentistry, obviously, you do endodontics, which is better known as root canal treatment. Um, you will have exposure to oral medicine, oral pathology, um, oral surgery. So you will remove, you know, impacted wisdom teeth and that sort of, what I guess you would call moderate in, in moderately invasive surgical procedures. Um, periodontics is the treatment of the tissues around the teeth, so the gingiva and the bone. Um, pedodontics, we save until your final years. So we don't let you treat children until you're more of a competent practitioner. And in the final year of the program, we do let you then treat children because children can be a little bit more difficult, uh, particularly in, in their behavior. <laughs> Um, prosthodontics is the replacement of missing teeth. Um, and there are other subdisciplines as well. We'll expose you to special needs dentistry, so uh, geriatric dentistry or dentistry for individuals who are limited in uh, mental or physical capacity, for example. You do need an array of skills. Communication is absolutely key. Probably half of all complaints against dental practitioners in Australia through the regulatory body are because of a failure in communication with the patient. So the patient didn't understand what was going to happen or felt that they weren't, the cost wasn't explained properly or some other failure in communication. So it's absolutely key that you're a good communicator. Um, good manual dexterity is helpful, but it's, it's training on the job. So if you're not too great with manual dexterity, usually we can compensate you with the sheer exposure and practice over, over the years. Uh, interpersonal skills comes under communication, a good business sense. We don't really focus too much on the business side of dentistry at undergraduate level. Um, there is a shift in the, you know, back in the day, you would get your dental degree and you would open up your own business, but that's, that's a changing environment. Uh, we're much more encouraging of you to get your dental degree and then hone your dental skills over the next few years uh, before taking on any sort of uh, owning your own business or anything like that. Um, honesty and compassion, uh, that's a given. You're a health practitioner, uh, which means you're a, a professional in society. And so there are expectations on you. Um, and also there are sort of certain provisions given to you. So, you know, you, you'll be able to uh, sign the back of passport photos or anything like that because you're recognized by the government as a professional uh, and a member of, of the, uh, an upstanding member of the community. Definitely good problem solving skills. Uh, you will encounter situations where you have to rapidly diagnose and treat a condition in a limited amount of time, sometimes under sort of extenuating circumstances. Like I said, patient behavior is not fully cooperative or something like this. So uh, problem solving uh, is absolutely paramount. Um, and that's again, something that hopefully ties together by the time you graduate. Um, but if you have a more of a fluid intelligence, you can link concepts together. Uh, you will find dentistry slightly easier than those who are a little bit better at simply memorizing lists, for example. You do need a commitment to lifelong learning in Australia. You're legally required to undertake um, a certain number of hours of uh, postgraduate, uh, not study, but continuing development. So you have to attend lectures. You have to commit to doing at least 20 hours a year of, of ongoing uh, training. Um, uh, in order to maintain your skills as a practitioner and, and your learning of, of all the changes that come along throughout your career. This is the actual setup. I won't go through this in detail, but essentially what you'll do in the first two years of the program is a combination of dental courses. So those begin with dent and non-dental courses. So you'll undertake studies in biomedicine, chemistry, um, the Health 1000 is a course which is essentially a public health course where you learn about the, the health system in Australia and Queensland specifically, uh, and even biochemistry as well. So it's, it's, it's quite a full-on uh, period of intense science. Uh, however, we do get you into the clinics and into the preclinical laboratory spaces to practice your hands-on skills as well. And so we do have core dental practice and dental science courses that run through that two years as well. And essentially what we're doing in the first two years is preparing you to be competent enough in a preclinical setting that you can then begin to treat your first patients in year three of the program. And that literally means, uh, you know, 
drilling and filling teeth as well, so restorative work. Um, and as soon as you drill through the enamel, which is the only acellular tissue in your body, you're hitting dentine, which is very much alive, and patients will feel that. So you'll need to be trained in the provision of local anesthesia and actually doing your surgical work. So as soon as you drill into the tooth, you become a surgeon in year three of your program. Um, so there's a lot of science that goes behind that um, to make sure that you understand what you're doing. And he is, of course, why you're doing it. What's the diagnosis? No diagnosis, no treatment. This is the building itself or part of it. It's actually a very large building. It's um, seven stories tall. Uh, this end of the building, you can only see four stories, but that's because the rest are underground. So it is uh, two, two levels of parking, um, a series of clinics, which are sort of on a mountain slide or a, a hillside. <laughs> so some of it's underground, um, uh, whereas the rest of it, you'll actually get some windows. Uh, various clinics on levels uh, three, four, five, and even six. And then the, the uppermost level, level seven, is basically where all the staff reside. So my office, for example, right now is on level seven, although my view is simply of a car park, so I'm not going to show you my view. It's not very pretty. But we do have views across the local golf course in the city, uh, and it is a very, very nice area to be in in Hurston in Brisbane. Uh, this lower area, for example, this open space underneath this atrium is uh, a very good uh, cafe. So students tend to stay on site for their lunch. You do have on level five a specific student area. Um, we're mingling with you know, all the mods and cons, cutlery and microwaves and whatever you might need. So uh, it, it's a, we try and have a lot of uh, social interaction between students and staff as well uh, uh, to sort of improve the whole experience, uh, particularly if you're studying overseas. These are just other views. Uh, the top left there, this is the other end of the building. So my office is on the back side of here. You don't really see it, so on the other side. Um, we're very close to a local uh, major bus route and um, access to the building is actually very easy for anyone in Brisbane. You just hop on a bus from the city center and it's, it's a 10 minute ride or a five minute ride. So it's not very far. Um, as I've mentioned, underground parking and then various levels. You can see the architecture of the building is quite um, unique. It, it's won a number of awards, not only for the external facade, but also the internal design of the building as well. So as I mentioned, only opened in 2015, so quite, quite modern and kitted out with all the most recent um, uh, dental chairs, radiography equipment, and there are even surgical uh, spaces. There's even space to do general anesthesia, dentistry. However, that's we don't do that much of that in undergraduate level, um, but postgraduates uh, have on-site um, operating theatres, for example. So it is it's quite a a well kitted out building. Um, this is the atrium. We call it the atrium, but essentially you'll sit here and have your lunch usually or a quick coffee break. So it's quite a pleasant environment and it's the sort of envy of the local campus. We're right next door to the old medical building, <coughs> excuse me, and uh, uh, a lot of those students and a lot of even patients from the local hospital, the Royal Brisbane Hospital, come over for lunch at the, at the Oral Health Centre because it's got the most swish uh, surroundings and best cafe. So <laughs> um, bottom left there is a one of our clinics. Uh, this is the waiting area for the patients, uh, the reception desk. This photograph was taken before it was kitted out. So obviously there's all kinds of fax machines and whatever here now, and it, it looks a bit busier, but you can see in the background um, uh, views of the city in the distance, so the skyscrapers. And um, just, I can't see if you can make that out, but just in that photograph, you can just see one of the golf courses as well, one of the fairways. So it, it does have very nice views and um, it is a very modern and appealing building to work in and study in. Um, Nicole, I'll just finish up. I've got one more minute. Yeah. Um, so again, just another picture of the actual um, clinics. There's the, the patient chair facing the wall so that they get some level of privacy. Um, again, introduction to children. So typically the parents and siblings will come along. You do that in your final year. Um, as a final year student, we try um, to get you dental assistance as best as we can. So that means when you're operating in your final year, you'll have a dental assistant just for you for the whole session, which um, not all dental schools do. And in fact, I was speaking to someone who 
was a postgraduate student at Harvard, and even they don't do that for their postgraduates. So if you get that experience at undergraduate, take it. <laughs> um, this is the main uh, lecture theater. It holds about 150, which is all it needs to hold. We only take about 80 students in any year level. Um, and again, all the mod cons, uh, not just the facade of what you're seeing, but um, um, you know, various ports for USB connections, charging mobile phones, whatever you need, it's all there and ready to go. Here's the actual SIM clinic. So students gowned up in their personal protective equipment uh, operating on mannequins. So these are false, false teeth and heads, phantom heads. And that's where you do the bulk of your training in the first two years, practical training before you see your first patients in year three. Uh, Nicole, I'm happy to take any questions if I can. Yeah, we did have a couple. Um, yeah. We've got about a minute here. So maybe I'll um, ask, somebody wanted to know if the first year of this program will be online in 2022. Yeah, so essentially how it works, if you can't get here and it's looking like it will be difficult in 2022, um, we do flexible course delivery. So that means you'll do all the online learning that you can across the vast majority of the courses. There is one particular course where there is an element of practical work which is required. And that's the Dental 1050 or Dental Practice 1. In that particular case, you basically get an extension uh, and you will undertake the practical component on your entry into Australia. So. Uh, if you're not able to arrive until 2023, then you'll undertake um, a few weeks of intensive practical skills training before you continue into year two. So you should be able to undertake and pass all of your courses online, uh, bar that one course. Your grade will be classed as an INC or an incomplete uh, until you've completed the practical element, and then you will continue into year two of the program. And from year two onward, it really is, you really do need to be here. It's, uh, it becomes much more practically intense. Excellent. Um, we do have a couple of other questions, but we do have to end it here. So if yep. you have questions specific to UQ Dentistry, please uh, visit the UQ room after this presentation um, and you'll get your questions answered. You can also join the Austrac Dentistry room um, as well. Thank you so much, Matthew, for being with us and showing us around the UQ Dentistry building. Thank you, Nicole. Thanks, Thanks so everyone. much. Bye now. Take care.